You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. We took it all. We brought them to our land. An endless night. Ember hot and icy cold. The rage of the earth. We made this curse. Carved it in the blood on our backs. We did not see. We could not, but she did. And in the end... What will I become? Senwa Saga. Hellblade 2. Play it now with Game Pass. Say goodbye to your credit card rewards. Greedy corporate megastores led by Walmart and Target are pushing for a law in Congress to take away your hard-earned cash back and travel points to line their pockets. The Durbin Marshall credit card bill would enact harmful credit card routing mandates that would end credit card rewards as we know it. If you love your credit card rewards, tell your lawmakers, hands off my rewards. Tell them to oppose the Durbin Marshall credit card bill. Recorded in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff, this is Triviality. Hello and welcome to Triviality, the game where a lack of seriousness meets a little bit of Ken. Why are you being a weirdo again? Because <laughs> I have a cherry ball in my mouth. And he I doesn't know any other yeah, way to cherry, be. Cherry balls? I have the cherry ball, German cherry is ball in my Herman mouth. Is that the the German balls? Yep, right here. Can you hear it? Oh, oh. Well, so Neil, Neil, Neil you went to a German market. I went to a German market. And you got uh, the cherry, cherry hard candy. I did back back in Christmas. Went to the Chris Kindle Mark market. Chris Kindle Mark. No. So those cherry balls <laughs> are like half a year old. Yeah, yeah, but I just keep eating them. They taste good. Yeah, fine wine. Yeah, they are like it's fine wine. Though. They're age. really good. But anyway, if you're not into cherry balls, that's okay. But you're here for trivia, and that's that's what we're all here for. Uh, but how are you doing, Matt? Um, over in uh, Mattland. Matland, yep, that's where I reside currently. Uh, everything's good over here. Feeling good. Good. Springtime. Love. Spring is in the air, right? Yeah, I guess so. it's in the air. Yeah, I don't know if it's raining by you, but it's either rain or spring. Uh, but thank you uh, for, for all being here and listening uh, to yet another episode of Triviality. We couldn't do it without you, and we're going to talk a little bit more about how you can help us uh, continue the show. But before we do that, uh, we have to introduce our guest for today's game that we're excited to play. We're going to start with our guest host today. Uh, she's been on the show many times. You know her, your lover, rules guy impersonator from Patreon, uh, coming to us from Mesa, Arizona, Kylie Diggs. How are you, Kylie? I'm great. How are you guys? Doing awesome. Uh, we're, we're excited to have you on Bloodsport, which is currently going on. But uh, what else is going on in your world and what are you up to? Not much. Just writing trivia and playing it. Um, I, as you guys know, I'm the owner and quiz master of brainwave trivia so you can check that out on social media or brainwavetrivia.com if you like that sort of thing um but other than that yeah just writing and hosting and playing trivia life well we're happy to have you here and i know we've been talking about it forever and we're still going to need to do it but uh, i know you have a an nsync uh trivia based game that we need to play and maybe we'll get some other competitors along with me to do it be, uh, in honor of them uh, reuniting uh, for one night only for Justin Timberlake's new album. Yeah, I think they're going to keep reuniting as long as Justin Timberlake wants to uh, try and milk the nostalgia bump for his new solo album. But, oh, I have a tortured relationship with those boys at this point, <laughs> specifically Justin Timberlake, but that would be an entirely different podcast. So let's just move on from that quickly. All right. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it uh, another time. But uh, yeah, thank you for being here. We're excited for your game. And our competitor today uh, saved my butt a little bit uh, recently with one of the book projects I was working on. So I appreciate that. A little, little technical know-how. A little technical know-how. Uh, coming to us from Sydney, Australia, one of our, our favorite Aussie people, Oakland 5 supporter on Go Patreon. Swans. Go Swans. <laughs> Mark Sheehan. How are you, Mark? Go Swans. Thank you very much for having me, guys. Of course. And, and uh, let us know what you've been up to and a little bit about yourself. Uh, just uh, trying to you know, get away with not working too hard. Um, you know, recently, well, not recently, they're 15 months old now. So twin girls, which is a, a hell of a, hell of a busy, busy time over here. So just trying to, um, yeah, escape for two hours to hang out with you guys. Well, we appreciate that. And, and it's, uh, the start of your day, right? What time is it by you? Yeah, 6am here. So once I finish here, it'll be straight into work and then straight into parenting. And then, uh, Lord help me. I'll try and get some sleep sometime in the next three weeks. <laughs> So, so you said you were going to team up with Neil and combining his love for Spielberg and your need for a little extra coffee, your team name was going to be what? It was going to be, we're going to need a bigger mug. We're going to be a, need a bigger mug. 
Uh, for Jeff and myself, I think we're going to go with Spielberg's most popular film, The Post, and turn it into The Roast. <laughs> there you go. All right. And Matt, you're going to score key for us today? Yes, I will score key. Uh, if I had a team name, we'd be Indiana Jones and the Last Croissant. Oh. <laughs> See, and I wanted to be Creamer. Why did it have to be Creamer? <laughs> <laughs> we could be whatever you want, Jeff. Uh, well, yeah, I guess uh, before we get the game going, uh, Kylie, who would you like to hear the rules from? Um, I think just the traditional would work for me this time. All right. The rules of the game are simple. 20 questions split into two rounds worth 10 points apiece. At halftime, there'll be a special swing round designed by this week's host. After regulation, players will enter the final round with the points that they've accumulated and will have a chance to wager 0 to 30 points on five categorized questions. At the end of the game, someone will be named the cream of the crop. The cream will rise to the top, oh yeah. Tradition, tradition. Ah, Darren was doing his best uh, Tevya impression from Filler on the Roof. Very traditional. Very traditional. All right, Kylie, uh, we're ready to play. Uh, let's let's rock and roll. All right, we'll start with round one, question one. Category is weird flex, but okay. Often called simply a vodka cranberry, what is the alternate geographical name for this cocktail, which comes from a peninsula in the northeastern U.S. known for cranberry production? All right, so uh, Mark and I discussed a little bit, and he told me that he trusted me with, uh, you know, the U.S. geography, which I wouldn't trust myself with U.S. geography. Um, but luckily, I've heard the name of this uh, cocktail, the the nickname or whatever you want to call it, uh, and it's very fitting uh, with our name being we're going to need a bigger mug because it's where they film Jaws, so we're going to go with Cape Cod. Mm, we said Cape Cod also. And Cape Cod is the correct answer. Points all around. I'm glad. So, um, I, I felt like I was going to be embarrassed by that answer, but it was correct. Mm -hmm. The um, peninsula of Cape Cod is said to be shaped like an arm flexing a bicep. So that's ah, yeah, that makes sense. Hint there. I didn't right. know they were famous for cranberries, though. And creatine. Question number two. <laughs> Category is, I don't know her. In 2006, Tom Petty responded to a plagiarism controversy involving one of his songs. He said, quote, The truth is, I seriously doubt there's any negative intent there. A lot of rock and roll songs sound alike. If someone took my song note for note and stole it maliciously, then maybe. But I don't believe in lawsuits much. I think there are enough frivolous lawsuits in this country without people fighting over pop songs. For five points each, name the 1993 Tom Petty song and the 2006 Red Hot Chili Peppers song that this quote references. I think we are locked in on this one. What was the year on the Chili Peppers song? 2006. This is the yeah. this is 100 percent it. Yeah, yeah, yep. I know there was some sort of legal battle with I think I won't back down. I think was the song, um, or an artist it, their song sounded exactly like it, but I don't know if it was the Chili Peppers though. That's the one that's kind of messing with me here. Mm. I I don't really have a lot on the. Oh, that was uh, Sam Smith. Stay with me. Oh, okay. So that's what I was thinking of. I was thinking of Tom Petty and and Sam Smith then having a a thing with I won't back down. Oh, and he definitely backed down on that one. Yeah, I'm just thinking with the clue, the category it was I don't know her. Um, so I'm thinking Red Hot Chili Peppers songs or Tom Petty songs with names in the title. But I've got Danny California for Chili Peppers, but that's purely just based on the category without any. Oh, didn't he do uh, Last Dance with Mary Jane, that song? Um, I, I, I say let's go with that song, because I think there is a Chili Pepper song that sounds like that. Um, but I, I don't know the Chili Pepper song, so do you, do you want to just say Danny California, just because I can't think of another uh, one? I do think Danny California is a little bit later than 2006, though. So if you've got a song with a name in it, let's go with something a bit more um, Zephyr or something a little bit earlier. Okay, we'll just lock in officially with Last Dance with Mary Jane. That's all we got. Okay, uh, we think you should have gone with uh, Danny California after all. Yeah, I'm sure we that one think came out last dance. 2006, with, yeah. Yeah, we think it's last dance with Mary Jane and Danny California. And you are correct. It is, well, it's Mary Jane's last dance, but I yeah. think most people know it as last dance with Mary Jane, so I would probably award points on that. I'll leave that up to Matt, but. Yes, I always give points. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. <laughs> Question number three. Category, well, that turned into a dog's dinner. Wayne Gretzky is considered, by most any metric, the greatest hockey player of all time. As a coach, though, not so much. 
What team did the Great One coach for four seasons from 2005 to 2009, ending with a dismal 143, 161, and 24 record and not making the playoffs once? Mark, are you a big American ice hockey fan? I could I could tell you probably are. Uh, funnily enough, I am actually a huge Bruins fan. Um, I do nice. try and watch right. most games. Um, yes, so I, I do love the so hockey. So it wasn't the Bruins, um, got it. <laughs> um, I, as far as I'm concerned... We have two good sports, and it's hockey and basketball in that order. And basketball would be the it's... most watched in Australia, I think. But yes, yeah. I, I do love the hockey. I do not know this. I'm just trying to think. Dog's dinner being the category, um, a dog related. All right. So, um, Jeff, I'm not too sure on this one. I'm trying to put my finger on it. I've definitely heard this, but no team's coming to me right now. I don't get the clue. Uh, let's just go with the Islanders because they're often bad. Often. Yeah, and we're going to lock in with the Coyotes based on the clue. Oh, yeah. Well, and a little game theory. Uh, that would be my favorite NHL team, the Arizona, then Phoenix Coyotes. Mm, sorry to hear that, Kylie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a rough life. Don't worry, my brother is a Vikings fan, so. Oh, it just runs in the family. It does. We have ter <laughs> terrible, terrible taste in sports teams. Question number four, category is teach your children. In 2000, Melissa Etheridge and her then partner, Julie Cipher, appeared on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine with what well-known musician, revealing him to be the biological father of their two children who had been conceived via artificial insemination? We can lock in, Ken. Um... I think this one is um, also hockey related. <laughs> it's the one musician. Uh, well, I'm having a really bad brain fart. Unless you know it, Mark. Um, he has the Mark Twain mustache. Um, he was in. Uh, it's one of. Oh, let me think. It's got to be David Crosby's the one with the mustache, right? I I didn't think I knew this, and then you said Mark Twain mustache, and I knew it even less. So I am going to go with you. <laughs> I, I think if if David Crosby is the one who has the big mustache and the ponytail, then it's him because I know it's that's what the guy looks like, and I knew it was from a folk or a rock group. So we'll, we'll say Crosby official answer. Pretty sure I mean, Teach Your Children is off of their uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash self titled album from was that sixty nine? Ken, I don't know, Jeff. Uh, but yeah, we two said David You're the Crosby. one adding information, so don't. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are both locked in with David Crosby? Yes, yes, not Sidney Crosby. And that's points for both teams. It's David Crosby. All right. You're on a little sea kick here. You got Cape Cod, Coyotes, Crosby. Oh, unintentional. Well done now. Yeah. Question number five. Now is the wind tour of our discontent. Anna Wintour, who has been the editor of Vogue magazine since 1988, has appeared in two feature-length documentaries about her work with the publication. One focuses on the preparations for an important annual edition of the magazine, and the other on the preparations for an important annual fundraising event it organizes. Five points for each of these docs you can name, both of which happen to have a month in the title. <clears throat> Pass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mark and I discussed. Uh, we think we know one of them for sure. I'm probably going to take a guess on the other one uh, to see if we can get any extra points, but we're going to lock in. I think we know the events, right? One's the, the Met Gala. Right. And the other one's the, like the spring, spring catalog, catalog. But yeah. we don't know the, the docks. Right. So you have April is the cruelest month. Uh -huh. Right. Um, and then when isn't is that when the Met Gala takes place? About that time? Sure. Or May? Somewhere around there. It's upcoming, I've heard. Okay. Um, <laughs> could be happening right now. It could be, as we and speak. And the other one's called May There Be Catalogs. All right, well, we knew one of them. Uh, I've, I've heard of uh, the September issue, so that one I, I know for sure uh, is one of the documentaries. And then the other one, I, I don't know the title of it. I'm assuming it's going to have May in the title because that's when the Met Gala is. So we'll just say uh, um, the, the month of May. May Day. Mm, it's going to be May. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> So some partial points here. Um, the One of them is the September issue about uh, that largest, largest in, in, in the fashion industry anyway, fashion magazines. The September issue is generally the one with the most ad space, sets the tone for the season, etc. cetera. Uh, and then the other one is about the Met Gala. It is called The First Monday in May. 
All right, after five questions, Bigger Mug, uh, giving a slight lead, uh, 40 points to the Roast 30, but it's anyone's game. All right, let's move on to question six. Category, give her a round of applause. Speaking of Vogue, in the bridge of Madonna's song Vogue, she name dropped 16 stars of the golden age of Hollywood. When she performed the song Vogue as the headliner of the 2012 Super Bowl halftime show, who was the only celebrity named in the song who would have been able to watch it, given that they were the only one of the 16 still living? Uh, we're going to go ahead and lock in with a guess here. All right. So I've been talking to Mark here, typing out some names. Gene Kelly, Gene Harlow, Betty Davis, Fred Astaire, Grace Dead. Kelly, Dead. Marilyn Monroe, Dead. James Dean, Dead. DiMaggio, Dead. Brando, Ginger Dead. Rogers, uh, Rita Hayworth. I'll give you a clue. They're all dead now. Uh, I, think. I think Lauren Bacall was probably dead in 2020, 2012. Catherine Hepburn. Marlon Brando, when did he die? Could be Brando. What do you think, Mark? Yeah, I like Brando. I know he, he made it fairly late on in life. Um, but I don't, yes. Years are, again, not too well with it, but I thought he lived to fairly late. All right. Um... Yeah, I'm just not too sure on this one. I know I know most of the names on the song, but yeah, maybe maybe we'll just go with Brando. I I can't remember when he passed away, but we'll yeah, we'll lock that in. All right. Um not too familiar with the names in the song, so we're just going to go with a uh, icon and say Jaja Gabor. Well, the right answer was said in the deliberations, but not uh locked in unfortunately. The answer is Lauren Bacall. Uh Lauren Bacall died in 2014. And uh, the category, give her a round of applause. Applause uh, is one of the shows that Lauren Bacall won a Tony for. Question number seven, giving ourselves one more chance. Recommended by the USDA and the National Institutes of Health, the DASH diet, which is heavy on fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and lean meats, while limiting saturated, saturated fats and fats. sugar, sounds like a pretty sensible eating plan for anybody looking to improve their health. But its acronymic name indicates that it was designed specifically to help people suffering from what condition? All right, we're going to lock in with a guess here. Sounds like a sensible diet for somebody with this particular disease. So we hope it's a sensible guess. Mark, uh, what do you know about dash or dashing, <laughs> other than being dashing yourself? That's pretty much where my uh, experience lies. Um, I I'm trying to think as as you mentioned of any um, conditions with S or H in the name, but I'm really coming up blank. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, maybe dash dietary uh, approach, dietary uh, apparatus, um, singular something. So sounds right. Um, something with H. Um, um, I don't think there's a special diet for herpes, so I am running out of ideas. <laughs> herpes is probably better than anything I'm going to come up with. Um, <laughs> not hemorrhoids? Uh, oh, yeah, the, the, the hemorrhoid diet. I mean, that, that could be a diet. Uh, not a lot of fiber. Um, well, yeah, let's, uh, let's just, yeah, whatever. We'll go, we'll go with herpes. Dash is for herpes. We're going to go with uh, type 2 diabetes. Unfortunately, no points on this one. Uh, in dash, the H stands for hypertension or high blood pressure. Mm. Oh. Yep. Dash. Oh, okay. Yep. It's it, Neil's getting there. It's dietary approaches to stop hypertension, uh, and that category title was a bit of a lyric from the Queen and David Bowie song "Under Pressure." Mm. Oh. Question number eight: Party for your right to fight. During World War II, the Blue Division of the German Wehrmacht fought exclusively at the Eastern Front. This division was made up of about 45,000 volunteers from what country, which officially had a stance of neutrality during the war, though it aligned politically with the Axis powers in many ways, and so facilitated its citizens' ability to enlist in the German army. Mark and I, uh, we're having a little bit of a discussion, but um, Mark, what was your first thought that you, you said, which I thought was a, a decent answer? Yeah, the first thing that popped into my mind about neutrality was was Spain. I know they kind of aligned uh, politically. They just didn't have the money to join into a war, which makes me, you know, leads to that, you know, they still facilitated their citizens' ability. Um, yeah, I'm not sure geographically it makes sense, but Spain was where my head was at. I like that. I, I trust you. Um, so, yeah, let's lock in with Spain if that's okay with you. 
Yeah. Um, while Ken and I had discussed uh, such other neutral S countries as Switzerland and Sweden, uh, we too ultimately settled on Spain. Points for both teams. It was Spain. Question number nine. Horsey stuff. An Olympic event since 1912, what equestrian discipline, whose name derives from the French word for training, involves a horse performing a series of precision maneuvers with little or no instruction from the rider? I'm a huge fan of oh, Bruce yes. Springsteen's daughter, so <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 wear, I wear her jersey and I root for her every Olympics, um, so we're locked in. Yeah, uh, we, we thought of this one uh, fairly quickly as well. Uh, Mark is an expert uh, in dressage. Is that right, Mark? Absolutely. Um, uh, my partner used to ride horses, actually, um, and I got on my months and um, couldn't couldn't stop. I was, I was holding on for dear life. I was petrified. But yes, dressage, I believe. Uh, we also said dressage. Points for both teams. It is dressage. There's no fancy title. Than, uh... Uh, well, I was going to say, I don't know if anyone's seen the Snoop Dogg uh, comment, commenting on oh, dressage. horse crip walking. Horse crip walking. Absolutely. It's very yeah. good. It's, yeah. When him and Kevin Hart did the Olympics coverage, it was one of my favorite things. It'd be really cool if dressage had like cheering sections like uh, like football matches. That'd be fun. They start singing songs about the horse. Mm-hmm. Do you ride horses out in Arizona, Kylie? Uh, no, I am terrified of horses. Oh, really? They have minds of their own. They could go in any direction, and I am not <laughs> a true. skilled enough rider to uh, make sure that they go in the direction I want to. So I just I look at them from afar and say, mm-hmm. "Ooh, horses!" And then you know who you share along in my car. Who you share a fear of horses with is uh, Bill Hader. Is that so? Question number ten: Power players. The 2024 Vanity Fair Hollywood issue featured 11 total stars on its trifold pullout cover. But the front fold, or the cover proper when displayed on newsstands, featured Natalie Portman along with three men. One is a multi-hyphenate who scored his 10th, 11th, and 12th Oscar nominations this year, but still has yet to win. The second is an out gay actor who picked up his first Oscar nomination this year for a biopic of an out gay activist. The third is an internet boyfriend who put his first SAG award on the shelf this year for an HBO series. Five points for each of these men you can name. We can lock in. Okay. Um, well, we're going to start with uh, Pedro Pascal, and uh, I think the guy's name is Coleman Domingo. Um, and the third one we just can't come up with. So, Yep. Uh, we locked in with uh, Pedro Pascal, Coleman Domingo, and uh, I'm going to throw it to Mark for the multi-hyphenate. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> over here in Australia, we only just got Titanic in cinemas, but even we know that that was uh, Bradley <laughs> Cooper. And the three men on that cover with Natalie Portman were Pedro Pascal, Coleman Domingo, and Bradley Cooper. Oh, you didn't mean a, a name multi-hyphenate. You meant writer, director, producer. Yes, Bradley gotcha. Cooper was, yeah, his three nominations this year came as the producer, uh, maestro, uh, maestro, best actor, and best original screenplay. All right, going into the swing round, a bigger mug with a slight lead, uh, 75 points to the row 60 points. Um, but I assume that it is still anyone's game. That is correct. Now, before we get to the swing round, Kylie, uh, speaking of coffee, we have coffee-themed uh, team names today. Uh, Matt, uh, how much about uh, at the conglomerate is uh, like a frappuccino or a latte of some sort? Oh, the the price is always rising, but you know what stays the same price? Yeah, uh, Patreon does. A $5 subscription. A $5 <laughs> subscription, uh, which is about the, the cost of a cup of coffee. So if, you, if you're if you willing to you know give up one of your lattes a month uh, for $5 uh, and donate it to Patreon, you can come get a bunch of extra content over here. Get days of content. And let's be honest, days. it's been $5 for some years now, so it's also resistant to inflation, and the value keeps rising. That's right. That's true. Uh, and Ken, uh, as you like to say, if even if you just want to pay a dollar a month, a dollar a month, you can get ad-free episodes. Yep, including these Patreon uh, bonuses or these Patreon plugs. You won't hear though, hear those, and uh, you also get uh, all the episodes a little bit early too. That's right. Uh, but yeah, if you'd like to join uh, Mark and Kylie over at Patreon, you can go to patreon.com/slash Triviality Podcast and uh, get just uh, buttloads of extra audio content. We hope to see you there because, as we've said, we're doing weekly Patreon bonuses. So come join us and uh, have fun. And buttload is a technical term. It is, Jeff. Correct. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> it felt like Christmas when the uh, Patreon feed for Spotify came out. That was Ooh, a massive win. Oh, yes. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for that pitch. 
And uh, while we move ahead to the swing round, Kylie, what do you have for us? For the swing round, I've got trivia math for you. So oh. you're going to figure out the answer to these equations that use clues about numbers rather than the numbers themselves. For example, if I said the number of nursery rhyme blind mice times the movie where Gerard Butler plays King Leonidas, you would know that's three blind mice and the movie 300. So your answer would be 900. Exactly. Okay. Number one, the traditional number of comedic stooges times the total number of kids in TV's blended Brady family. Number two, the number of sides that a hexagon has minus the number of different colors in the Google logo. Number three, the magazine founded in 1944 that is aimed at young women, plus the number of times the U.S. women's national soccer team has won the FIFA Women's World Cup. Number four, the regnal number of the English king who broke with the Catholic Church to marry his second wife, times the Broadway musical about the total number of wives he eventually had. Number five, the two-digit year that Bill Clinton was first inaugurated as president of the U.S., minus the number of contiguous American states. Number six, Adele's debut album, plus the number in the stage name of the rapper born Curtis Jackson III. Number seven, the number of millions that TV's Colonel Steve Austin was worth, times the number of seasons that Seinfeld was on the air. Number eight, the number that makes up a baker's dozen, minus the total number of MLB teams that play in California. Number nine, the number in the name of the band who had two number two hits with Stressed Out and Heathens times the number of original Spice Girls. Number 10, the number of ounces commonly associated with servings of malt liquor minus the number found on bottles of Jack Daniels whiskey. All right, we have our equations. We'll be back with hopefully the answers. We took it all. We brought them to our land. An endless night, ember hot and icy cold. The rage of the earth. We made this curse. Carved it in the blood on our backs. We did not see. We could not, but she did. And in the end, what will I become? Senwa Saga, Hellblade 2. Play it now with Game Pass. Say goodbye to your credit card rewards. Greedy corporate mega stores, led by Walmart and Target are pushing for a law in Congress to take away your hard-earned cash back and travel points to line their pockets. The Durbin Marshall credit card bill would enact harmful credit card routing mandates that would end credit card rewards as we know it. If you love your credit card rewards, tell your lawmakers, hands off my rewards. Tell them to oppose the Durbin Marshall credit card bill. And we are back with our digits, and uh, let's go ahead and get the questions one more time and see who will swing in the swing round. All right, number one, the number of comedic stooges times the number of Brady kids. We had three times six for 18. We also had three times six for 18. That is correct. Number two, the number of sides on a hexagon minus the number of colors in the Google logo. Six minus four for two. Uh, copy that. Six minus four for two. And that's right. The Google logo has yellow and green once each and red and blue twice each. Number three, the magazine founded in 1944 aimed at young women, plus the number of U.S. women's national soccer team FIFA World Cup wins. We said 17 plus two is 19. We had 17 plus 4 is 21. Points for one team here. The U.S. women's team has won that tournament four times, so it is 21. I knew they were good. They are a powerhouse. In fact, just this last year, it was a shocking upset that they did not finish in the top three. They have never not finished in the top three since the inception of the tournament. Number four, the English king who broke with the Catholic Church to marry his second wife times the Broadway musical about the number of wives he had. 
Uh, we said eight times six, which I think is 48. Uh, we two I had eight, six, and 48. Correct for both teams. Talking about Henry VIII and his divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, survived wives. The two-digit year the Bill Clinton was first inaugurated president minus the number of contiguous American states. We had 93 minus 48 being 45. We had 92 minus 48 as 44. Split vote here. It wasn't trying to be tricky, but it is 93 minus 48 for 45 because the elections happen uh, in the even years, but the inaugurations are on January 20th of the following year. So 1993. Adele's debut album plus the number in the stage name of the rapper born Curtis Jackson III. 21 and 50, 71. We had 19 and 50 for 69. Mm. Adele's first album was 19, 19. so the answer is 69. Nice. Had Not to do for it. Us. <laughs> The number of millions Colonel's, uh, Colonel Steve Austin was worth times the number of seasons of Seinfeld. We said six and times nine for 54. And we had six, nine, 54. 54 is correct. That, of course, is referencing the $6 million man played on TV by Lee Majors. The number in a baker's dozen minus the number of California MLB teams. 13 less five. We had eight. We had 13 less 3 for 10. It is 13 minus 5 for 8. Five MLB teams. Eventually that'll turn into 4 when the Oakland A's figure out their mess. Oh, I wasn't counting the A's. Las Vegas. Oh, San Diego, right. That was my bad, Mark. And I was already saying that Oakland was in Las Vegas in my head. So yeah, that was my bad. I always forget about the Padres, but not today. Hmm. The number in the name of the band who had two number two hits was stressed out and heathens times the number of original Spice Girls. 21 times 5 is 205. Uh, 105. Cool. 105. That's what I've written down. <laughs> we also had 21 and 5 for 105. 105 is correct. Points for both teams. The number of ounces commonly associated with servings of malt liquor minus the number on bottles of Jack Daniels. 40 minus 7 for 33. And 40 minus 7 for 33. Exactly right. All right. After the swing round, uh, they got different ones right and wrong, but ended up in the same place. It's Bigger Mug with 115 and The Roast with 100, clarifying anyone's game. All right. Round two, question 11. This is before and after, so it's a pretty straightforward before and after. The last word of the first part is the same as the first word of the second part. It is the actress whose most famous television character had the last name DeFazio meets the Hall of Fame running back who was the NFL MVP in 2000. Mark's NFL knowledge is second to none, so we're locked in. <laughs> I feel like Emmett Smith was before that. Was Ladanian Tomlinson after that? All right, so I want to pick the uh, actress based on what Jeff says about the running back, and he says the exact opposite. So we have no idea, and we're going to say Johnson Johnson. Johnson Johnson. Or Johnson Johnson Johnson. Oh, okay, the the extra Johnson & Johnson sibling, they don't do healthcare products, but they do uh, beans. Yes. Um, Super Bowl MVPs, apparently. Yeah, right. Um, so... Uh, DeFazio took me a minute. I, I kept thinking it was a Sopranos reference, but I was like, that's not uh, that's not right. And then I kept saying the name DeFazio, and, and it reminded me it was from Laverne and Shirley, uh, as Penny Marshall's character. And Mark, uh, just knowing you know the NFL better than a lot of people I've ever met, uh, was like, hey, greatest show on turf, Marshall Falk. So we said Penny Marshall Falk. And it is Penny Marshall Falk. Nice job, Mark. Well, thank you. That's exactly how I remember it happening. Question 12, category is off we go. There are 40 different colors in Crayola's blue color family, one of which is a medium blue-gray that takes its name from the nickname of the official song of the U.S. Air Force. What is that shade's three-word name? Okay, Mark, how do you how do you feel about crayon colors? Crayon? 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 <laughs> um, I feel... Uh, I've 
I remember in a design course I did once, someone said that, you know, women can see in 32 million colours and men have about six. So I would know that there are 40 colours called blue. <laughs> Um, so I, I don't know the, the Air Force song Off We Go sounds kind of familiar. I'm sure it's, you know, not necessarily the Saints Go Marching In, but it might be like a simple song like that. Um, but I, I have no idea. So let, we'll just say it's, um, Eye of the Tiger. U U US blue. Air Force could be something to do with the sky. Oh, sky blue. Yeah. We could, we could do, um, three, it's a three word one, right? Three word name. Yeah. So maybe, um, blue sky blue. <laughs> Deep blue sky. Deep blue sky. Yeah, there you go. Deep blue sky. All right. Uh, the uh, Air Force song starts with "Off we go into the wild blue yonder," so we're gonna say "Wild blue yonder." Hmm. Yet the official name of the official song of the U.S. Air Force is just called the U.S. Air Force, but its opening line is "Off we go into the wild blue yonder." So that is the crayon color. Wild blue yonder. The losing team today is gonna be sent to the wild blue yonder. Question 13, an eye for an eye, but in a good way. Thanks to its buy a pair, give a pair policy of donating a pair of glasses for each one it sells, what eyewear company founded in 2010 has since provided more than 15 million pairs to people in need in more than 75 countries? All right, so I thought it might be uh, Warby Parker right off the bat, but... Uh... Jeff says, Tom's does glasses too. Yep, I have a pair that says Give Sight engraved onto it, and I think it's Tom's. I do. I definitely do their shoes. I don't have any of their glasses, but uh, we'll go with Tom's. So Mark uh, had mentioned that um, they have spec savers in Australia, but and I said that there was a, a brand here that was increasing in popularity that I'm pretty sure does uh, buy a pair, give a pair. We said Warby Parker. Points to one team. It is Warby Parker. Uh, mm. Sorry, Ken. That's okay. I thought they were founded later than that. It's all right. It's all right. I'll remember it. Oh, he's sending you to the wild blue yonder. Just wait. You're going to the wild blue yonder, bro. <laughs> Question 14. Names the same. A 1971 rock song and a 1990 country song share the title Wild Horses. In the first, the lyrics indicate that the title animals, quote, couldn't drag me away. But the second tells us that they, quote, keep dragging me away. For five points each, name the two artists behind these songs that have very different ideas about the effect of wild horses. Neil, wild horses, not goodbye horses. Uh, yeah, I know. I was thinking. I I know you. I know what you're thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I was thinking. Okay, so Mark, I know one wild horses. I'm pretty sure is is the Rolling Stones. Do you agree with that one? Yep, that sounds right for the rock song. That's the good one. Yeah, the good one, right? And then the other one we're looking for is. Uh, the country one, or they keep dragging me away. Um, Who was big in the nineties? Country music. I mean, you're looking at Garth Brooks, um, Tra uh, Travis Tritt, maybe, or what's the other one's name? Uh, I see. I can't even think of any other country guy's name from the nineties. So maybe it is Garth Brooks because he's the easiest one. <laughs> <laughs> was he the one who changed his name and come out with a, a rock album? Yeah, he, he was. Uh, he had emo. He he went Matt and that's went right. Chris Gaines for a little while. That's right. That's what it was. Yes, let's go with that. Um, then. Took one look at Matt and said, "I want to be that." Because uh -huh. <laughs> he got cut from the Padres. I want to be like Matt. Uh, cool. Yeah, you're you're cool with that, Mark. We'll go Stones, and then we'll we'll just go Brooks for the guess. Sure, sounds good. Okay. All right, we're going uh, Rolling Stones and t taking a wild guess of Toby Keith for the other one. So the 1971 rock song, Wild Horses, was the Rolling Stones, and the 1990 Wild Horses was Garth Brooks. Mm. Nice. So just go on with the obvious, I guess. There were no lyrics about red solo cups, so it couldn't have been Toby Keith. Yeah, <laughs> Question 15. That's quite a story. In 2001, the staff of the Miami Herald won a Pulitzer Prize for breaking news reporting for their coverage surrounding what individual? Alan Diaz of the Associated Press won the Pulitzer for breaking news photography the same year for his famous photo of a law enforcement raid that per became perhaps the most iconic image of said individual. All right, we're going to lock in here. All right, Mark, I know a lot of this is U.S.-centric, uh, 
questions and clues and whatnot. But um, if you'll walk with me here a little bit, like Aaron Sorkin would write us. Take a walk and talk. Take a walk and talk. Uh, when I was in high school, there's a huge event uh, around Cuba of a, of a young kid who got photographed named Elian Gonzalez, who was getting ripped away from his family by police officers. Um, and I remember it was you know a huge story at the time before social media, so I'm sure it would have been even bigger now. But um, I think it might be Elian Gonzalez is the individual. Perfect. Let's let's go with it. Okay, that's that's what we're gonna lock in with. Yeah, uh, almost forgot about this, but we are also saying Elian Gonzalez. Points for both teams, Elian Gonzalez. Man, I haven't thought about that about, in so yeah. long. Yeah, it's like that ter- the Terry Shivo thing, just like yep, flash in the pan, sort of like these yep. huge stories. Interesting. And before social media too, because I mean that was like Princess Diana a few years before that. Uh, passed away so i mean just yeah jfk jr just a lot of those huge stories that never really you don't think about too much yeah. anymore yeah all right after the first half of the second round which we don't call it that i don't know why i said it that way it's 155 for bigger mug to 125 for the roast question 16 probably goes great with bourbon Mountain Dew offers a ton of exotic flavors exclusively at certain restaurants, such as the Baja Blast, which for years could only be purchased at Taco Bell before being introduced to grocery stores for 2024. Since 2019, what fast food restaurant chain has been the exclusive home to a peach and honey varietal called Mountain Dew Sweet Lightning? Ooh, oh my God. Just want to throw this out there. Baja Blast is the best flavor variant of Mountain Dew. Yeah, let's go Hands back down. to it being introduced into grocery stores. That's big news, Matt. It's exciting for me. That's 100% sure. Okay. So I'm thinking maybe based on the flavor profile, it would maybe be a southern which restaurant is, chain. Which is kind of why I was thinking of Zaxby's because they're kind of like a southern chicken place. But you I think that's too probably hard. too small of yeah. a chain. I like your idea of Sonic. I'm also thinking maybe like Hardee's or Carl's. I don't Jr. remember it being at Hardee's or Carl's Jr. Okay. The one time I've been to each of those. All right, let's go with Sonic then. Yeah, so Mark and I were discussing um, some different ideas, uh, and I don't drink Mountain Dew, so that, that kind of was an issue. Uh, and Mark, obviously, you know, he doesn't have as many fast food places as we do, but um, he clued me into the clue of the category, which was goes well with bourbon. When you think of bourbon, you think of Kentucky, so we thought of Kentucky Fried Chicken, KFC. Oh, mm. And the correct answer is KFC. Probably nice. does go good with bourbon. I have never been, well, I've been, but not in the last 15 or 20 yeah. years to a KFC. I, I haven't been there in a long time either, but I think for Mark, who, do you have KFC, Mark? Yes, yeah, it's quite big. Oh, okay, you do. Oh, yeah, you oh, do. Yeah. Wait, what am I saying? That's the Collingwood Magpie sponsor, KFC. People love yeah. KFC. But, but we have the new, I don't know if it's just in America, but they have the new chick. What's it called, Matt? The the chicken pizza? It's a pizza on a chicken? I have no idea what you're talking it's about. It's a brand new thing at KFC. It looks absolutely disgusting. A but pizza on a chicken or a chicken on a pizza? It's a, it's like a I chicken. I mean, chicken on pizza. I think the chicken it's is a chicken the base, shot. but there's there's cheese and pepperoni on top. Okay. It looks pretty gross. Good luck, KFC. <laughs> That's Pardon? not a, I wasn't trying to insult Australians. I just I hear a lot of them talk about their love of KFC. Okay. Uh, we, it is pretty big, especially uh, they sponsor the cricket, um, as you know. We love our cricket over here, so every cricket season. On, on a scale more of z- zero to ten, where would you rank Jeff's uh, accent there? Oh, that was an eleven. Perfect. Well done, Oof. well done, Jeff. I will say uh, you, you get a pass then. Jeff will get a pass, and we were talking a little bit. Matt had had mentioned before recording that he loves Australian Survivor. Um, but uh, we were saying, what do Australians do better than Americans? They do the American accent better than Americans can do any other accent. So that's they, true. They would definitely win that competition. I would have thought Jan, uh, Jan Strahovski was from LA, for instance. So yeah. Question seventeen: Seafood platter. In Finding Nemo, Marlon and Dory get directions to Sydney from a school of fish, voiced by John Ratzenberger, who use their formation skills to do impressions. These impressions include Marlon, a ship the Sydney Opera House, and three creatures with easily identifiable shapes. Take five points for each of these three creatures you can name. Ken is a huge aficionado of the Nemo gang. Highly relevant question based on our previous conversation. Now, Mark, have you been to uh, Wallaby Way? Is that your dentist? (laughs) Yes, that is the dentist I go to, and that's why my teeth are terrible, because of that damn pelican. (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, we're we're going to lock in with some guesses. We haven't seen this movie in a long time, uh, and we, we're having a little bit of a Dory situation going on here. We can't remember a lot of it. So. Okay. Uh, Jeff's trying to pry the images loose from the recesses. I kind right? of, I can kind of see the fish reassembling in my head now. Obviously, this is where we're at in the film, but I, yeah, I can't remember any of it. So I know they interact with sea turtle, and I think there's a jellyfish scene too, right? A jellyfish sounds good to me. So let's go with sure. a jellyfish, a sea turtle, and an angelfish. Is that what you wrote? Yeah. To or... to, to make a dory. Yeah, or a starfish? No. I don't think it's no starfish. starfish. I'm starfishing right, right now. We're going to go with sea turtle, jellyfish, and angelfish. Interesting. We went a completely different way. We went octopus, crab, and seahorse. So the three creatures that they form are a swordfish, a lobster, and an octopus. So a couple mm. of points there. We did very well at this. <laughs> Question 18. A charming choice. According to ESPN.com, Mike Schmidt is the greatest third baseman of all time, but according to Meg Ryan's character Annie in Sleepless in Seattle, that title instead goes to what man who was inducted first ballot into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1983? ESPN puts him at number five. I just wrote this question for the rom-com book during my all-nighter mark. A so third baseman? Yeah. <laughs> third baseman, hey. so we can lock in. <laughs> I do think you know about any third baseman? I can't. I don't think I can name a third baseman. Is Pete Rose a third baseman? Mm, I don't know. Let's say Pete Rose. Well, he can't be inducted uh, first ballot into oh. the Hall of Fame because he's banned. Good, good point. <laughs> so my, my, my answer is exactly wrong. Can you name another th- third baseman? Probably from Seattle. Oh, from Seattle? In the 80s? Johnson. Ha. Johnson? Uh, I've never seen Sleepless in Seattle, have you? No. No. Johnson? Johnson. Lucky Johnson. And Mark, you can take it for us. Yeah, so uh, Neil had this uh, written in our chat before Kylie was even a quarter away through the question, uh, and it's Brooks Robinson. She thinks Brooks Robinson is the greatest, and Tom Hanks responds, everybody thinks that. (laughs) Apparently not Uh, ESPN. (laughs) I'm glad we didn't uh, mull that over for very long. Yeah, it's a it's an obscure one if you're not yeah really into baseball and I just remember it from the movie from the line so because his son brings him the letter hey, look dad she like thinks Brooks Robinson's the best ever <laughs> the fifth greatest third baseman of all time pretty obscure <laughs> <laughs> he uh, played for uh, Baltimore Orioles for his whole career so the charming choice is too. the Charm City Elaine's favorite team <laughs> number nineteen mix and match. In 2021, Mad Men and Good Girls actress Christina Hendricks revealed that she had done some hand modeling in the early days of her career and that the hand on the poster for what Best Picture winner was hers. The stomach was not. Yeah, we can lock in. Yeah, uh, you're locked in? Mm Mm-hmm. All right, so um, I'm I'm almost positive if it wasn't the stomach and it wasn't the hand that was me in London, but uh, the best actor winner from this movie was. Uh, so we're gonna say American Beauty. Surprising. Surprising. Yeah, um, yeah, we're gonna say American Beauty as well. Points for both teams, American Beauty. Now uh, I'm curious. I know we've talked about this before. It's been seven years, uh, but when we first started the podcast, as, as far as our mission con- uh, statement was concerned. Um, you know, our slogan is the cream of the crop. Mm-hmm. And we said one day one of us would reenact the American beauty rose petals falling on but the naked cream? body, but with little those little cream buckets that you get at the, at the <laughs> little diners. Cream packets. Little cream packets. <laughs> so I'm not sure who's going to have to do that, but one of us, I think. Neil, I dream of that every night. <laughs> <laughs> Question 20. Category is Dear John. John Roberts is the current Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court, and the first was John Jay. Two other men named John have served in that post. Five points for each one you can name. Uh, Okay. Well, uh, Mark's U.S. knowledge is better than I expected, so we're going to lock in. All right. So we have uh, John Marshall. Who was the first or first, fourth, fifth, something? I don't know. John Jay was the first. Marshall was Marbury versus Madison era, right? He was up there. Maybe. And then, um, I'm trying to think is there of another other... John Jay? Were there two? No, I don't think so. I'm trying to think of other head justices like uh, Berger. That was Warren Berger, right? He was one of the progressive courts in the mid 
20th century. Um, mm. Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. Was it John Warren? There was the Warren Court. No, that wasn't his first name. John Dredd. Oh, Judge Dredd. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, we we knew that uh, thanks to Spielberg uh, in Amistad that uh, I believe John Quincy Adams uh, was one of them. I think. Um, probably not. Uh, and then uh, we also said Marshall, uh, too. So those were our guesses. So the correct answers are John Marshall. So you each get five points for that one. And the other one is John Rutledge. Okay. I think he was just a lawyer in the movie, but that's okay. It was an answer. All right. After the second round, uh, needing a bigger mug has gotten a bigger lead, actually, uh, extending their lead 195 to 140. But as always with the wagering, it is still anyone's game. Before we hear those final round categories, uh, Mark, I'm going to put you on the hot seat a little bit, and I'm just going to vamp a little bit here while you gather your thoughts. But uh, how do you feel about uh, being a patron, getting all the extra bonus audio content? And we talked about it a little bit that you listened to all that stuff, but uh, have you been enjoying all the weekly bonuses? Yeah, like I mentioned before, the Patreon feed on Spotify is a massive win for me. I do all my listening on Spotify. So I was putting up with the ads before even as a Patreon. So now that I don't have to listen to ads, I get more of you guys, which is just fantastic. Uh, even the, uh, unless the kids are in the car and they, you know, scream at me to put some music on. But otherwise, when I'm by myself, I love it. I think all the extra content is great. I learned so much about woodworking. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to Jeff. Yeah. Woodworking. And uh, maybe you'll do one about like gemstones or something coming up. Who knows? Maybe I'm just get inspiring you now for our next recording. Uh, but uh, you learn sure. a, a I'll little do one on the righteous gemstones. There you go. You learn a little bit about Matt's uh, Spotify playlists, which is always fun. Uh, and then get our Ask Me Anything style crop drops every month, too, which is great. But uh, yeah, if you'd like to join Mark and Kylie over at Patreon, get uh, weekly bonuses uh, as, as well as uh, hours and hours and even days, as Ken says, of bonus audio content, you can go to patreon.com slash Triviality Podcast. All right. And now let's move on to the final round and get the categories. All right. So I've got something a little bit unusual. It's the same format, but for our final round. So in this game... Uh, there have been multiple questions with two or three answers, and teams could score five points for each correct answer. But in this final round, each of the five questions has three answers, and in order to win your wager, you're going to have to give me all three correctly. Two out of three ain't bad, but it also ain't points. So take that into account when you make your wager. Each question has a title, but I'm also going to let you know broadly what type of category it is for clarity. So we have number one. Don't get mad, get everything. This is a movies question. Number two, you'd be mad to try and rob it. This is a Harry Potter question. Number three, you don't know Jack. This is a history and geography question. Number four, I can dig it. That's a science question. And number five, if you don't watch the violence, you'll never get desensitized to it. This is a video game question. And the wagers are now in. It looks like we're doing 20s all the way down, and these gentlemen at uh, Need a Bigger Mug, going to Need a Bigger Mug, have random random uh, bets. So we'll get those as we go. Kylie, what are the questions? Question one, don't get mad, get everything. In the 1996 movie The First Wives Club, the title trio are looking for justice after their husbands each leave them for younger women. What three actresses play the younger women? The first must have thought what a thrill it was to act alongside fellow Oscar winner Diane Keaton. The second couldn't help but wonder how her chemistry with Bette Midler was so good. And the third was probably so excited and so scared to star with Goldie Hawn. Question two. You'd be mad to try and rob it. When Hagrid takes Harry to his vault in Gringotts, the boy wizard sees stacks and stacks of coins his parents left him, fat gold ones, smaller silver ones, and little bronze ones. What are these three types of wizarding world currency? Number three, you don't know Jack. The design of the British flag called the Union Jack is a combination of three other older flags, the heraldic crosses representing England and Wales, Scotland, and Ireland. Those three historical flags are named for what three saints? Number four, I can dig it. 
Soil can have a variety of textures that are defined by their proportions of three primary components. For example, loam, which is particularly good for growing plants, has 7 to 27% of substance A, 28 to 50% substance B, and 52% or less of substance C. What are these three substances? Number five, if you don't watch the violence, you'll never get desensitized to it. Released in 1991, The Simpsons Arcade Game was a beat-em-up that let players choose to play as any of the family members, save Maggie, whose kidnapping sets the game in motion. Homer used his fists to fight the bad guys. What three objects did Marge, Bart, and Lisa use as weapons? All right, we have our questions. We'll be back with our answers. And we are now locked in with our answers and back from our break. So let's go ahead and get the questions one more time, and we'll see who will be today's cream of the crop. All right, question one. In the 1996 movie The First Wives Club, the title trio are looking for justice after their husbands each leave them for younger women. What three actresses play the younger women? Not any good idea here, but uh, we're going to say Halle Berry and Sarah Jessica Parker and Courtney Cox. Sounds like a great movie. Yeah, this is a good swerve. I thought you were just going to ask for the lead actresses of First Wives Club. Uh, but yeah, we, we got with the clues here, Sarah Jessica Parker. Um, I'm excited as Elizabeth Berkley from Saved by the Bell. And then the only other Oscar winner I could think of in the cast uh, is, is Marsha Gay Harden, who played the doctor. I can't remember if she was a lover, but that's what we locked in with. And those three women were Sarah Jessica Parker, Elizabeth Berkley, and Marsha Gay Harden. Hmm. What'd she win the Oscar for? Pollock. Ah. Uh. And when she accepted for Pollock, her first words in that speech were, what a thrill. Oh, that's where it came from. Okay. I was trying mm -hmm. to figure out that clue. Number two, you'd be mad to try and rob it. When Hagrid takes Harry to his vault in Gringotts, he sees stacks of coins, gold ones, silver ones, bronze ones. What are these three types of wizarding world currency? All right. We wager 20 on this. And I believe those were galleons, sickles, and newts. K-N-U-T-S. Maybe it's nuts. Who not? Whatever. Uh, and we wagered uh, 30 on the first question. This one's only for five. We didn't have a lot of Harry Potter knowledge. Um, so we thought maybe one of them was galleons, and then we just said rum snickers and perineums. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also am not exactly sure how it is pronounced in my head when I read it. It's always canutes. But yes, it's galleons, sickles, and newts. Number three, you don't know Jack. The design of the British flag called the Union Jack is a combination of three other older heraldic flags from England and Wales, Scotland, and Ireland. Those flags are named for what three saints? All right, uh, again, 20 for us. Uh, we said St. Patrick, St. Andrew, and St. George. Uh, yeah, we went 15 on this one, and we had the same answers, St. George, St. Patrick, and St. Andrew. And you guys are both correct, George, Andrew, and Patrick. Number four, I can dig it. Soil can have a variety of textures that are defined by their proportions of three primary components. What are these three substances? We said sand, silt, and clay for 20. That's that's much better than our guess. Of We went with 20. We had sand, uh, but then we had no real clothes, so water and dirt were the other two we threw in there points for one team it is sand silt and clay number five if you don't watch the violence you'll never get desensitized to it in the 1991 arcade game of the simpsons you can play as any of the simpsons family homer uses his fist to fight bad guys what three objects did marge bart and lisa use as weapons well, we're pretty sure that Bart uses the skateboard and Marge uses a vacuum cleaner. And um, Lisa was a little bit of a discussion. We thought maybe the saxophone, but Jeff has a I rem memory. I remember getting a question wrong about what Lisa fights with in one of the Simpsons games. And I answered saxophone and I was incorrect. The answer was yo-yo. So on the strength of that previous shame, I hope we're correct now. We will be following in your past shame because we went with for 10 points, uh, skateboard, saxophone, and for a win for feminism everywhere, Marge fighting with a vacuum cleaner. So Marge does use a vacuum cleaner. Bart uses a skateboard. Lisa should probably use a saxophone, but in fact, it's a jump rope. Jump rope. Mm. Sorry, Ken. Sorry. Right. So now I'm shamed twice. <laughs> twice shamed. 
All right. After those final questions, it was a really great final round. Some ups, some downs. The roast ending up with 160, which means today's cream of the crop is we're going to need a bigger mug with 205. Unjustifiably in a position that I'd rather not be in, but the cream will rise to the top. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Great game, Mark. Thank Congrats, you for guys. great bigger partner. mugs to carry around all those extra points. No, Kylie. Kind of- Kylie, off mic, you said that you play along with the show and you you can't seem to beat us, but today you beat us with these questions thoroughly, <laughs> I just want to say. Well, I wasn't trying to write a stumper game, but maybe subconsciously I just wanted revenge for all the losses you guys have been handing me and my husband the last several months. So I think I think <laughs> no, I think well, we've won once in yeah, in twenty twenty four so far. So I attribute that to our very smart guests. Um one being you, Kylie. Great, great questions today. Very fun game to play. Any final shout outs? Just to say uh, hello to my trivia partner, uh, Tim, my husband, and also my brother, Trent. And just um, wanted to uh, ask people to support small businesses in any way, shape, or form that you can. Including brainwave trivia. And triviality. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, well, I guess yes. we are a small business. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Thank you, Kylie, for this wonderful game. And uh, I wouldn't have had as much fun uh, doing the game by myself. And I'm glad I had a great partner uh, in Mark. So thanks, Mark, for joining us. Any uh, Anyone you'd like to say hello to or, or any shout outs before you get to work today? Uh, no, thank you, Neil. It was fun to ride your coattails to a win today. Um, I'm happy to walk away. This is my third recording as a contestant on Triviality and the first win. So um, I think I'll retire at this point but thank you all very much uh yeah shout out to connor uh, my partner who's got the kids keeping them somewhat quiet um yeah otherwise nothing else thank you all for having me and thanks for continuing to put out great content for us to enjoy every week and thank you mark for for being a great uh, representative of australia we love our australian listeners and uh, we also love our network airwave media so can uh, can you give us a little uh, taste of what people can enjoy over that's, at airwave that's right you can pop over at airwavemedia.com and check out Art of history, art smart, and who arted? A lot of if, art. If you want some art podcasts. Yeah. I, I know who arted in this studio because it's getting a little musty, but uh, if you want to learn Sorry, from... Guys. Can you smell the brand? I, I can smell some Picasso and I can smell some uh, Michael, Michelangelo, but uh, but yeah, uh, Airwave Media, thank you very much for being our network. Uh, and a big thank you to uh, Ken, Jeff, Matt, Mark, and Kylie for another great episode of Triviality. Uh, my name is Neil. We'll see you next time. Bye.